entering. First of all, I don't rip apart the games you like. I just... I don't extensively complain about... Name... Name a single time that I've done that. Name a single time that I've... Name two times that I've done that. There's nothing necessarily wrong with Dark Souls. I just... I'm of... I stand by the opinion that it's just not this wild craze that everyone makes it out to be. It's ubiquity doesn't hold up, I don't think. But that's another topic for another time. Matina Mia. That is a whole str I could ramble about Dark Souls, and not in the way the freaking from soft twinks talk about it. Oh, it's- oh, I love walking from point A to point B 17 times. No. I'm- I'm- I'm getting carried away already. I'm like- I know it's talking about the topic of this show. We're talking about- We're talking about- We're talking about Promare today. Obvious spoilers, but the movie's pretty old now. Hey everyone, good morning! Let's talk this thing up. It's about as old as our viewers. It's six years old. So how do I move you? What do you mean? It's 2020. Oh. Whatever. Um, okay, hold on. Obviously, though, it, it is going to involve spoilers for a movie. Um, so just fair warning. If you haven't... What? I really just need to talk about it. I've been holding, I've literally streamed because I've been wanting to talk about this movie. I've been holding it in since freaking Thursday. And then Sora's been so busy over the weekend, I'm like, please, please, God, Big Brother, oh, Big Brother, oh, Big Brother, I need to talk about Premiere. Oh, oh, Big Brother, Big Brother, I need to, t Big Brother, I need to talk about Premiere. <laughs> And then so was busy on Friday, so was busy on Saturday, so was busy on Sunday. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. I, I forgot to make it. Madre mia. Madre mia. Madre mia. Okay, so I just have to put the announcement out. Oh. I've had to hold in wanting to talk about the movie like a, a balloon that's been filled with too much air for like a full weekend. It's not pensive. It's 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 a little pensive. It's just so freaking good, man. I don't. Hold on, let's get it. Let's get it. We need some Subway Surfers gameplay for this, people. How do we tell them that YouTube chat's not checking? I'm on the wrong screen again, aren't I? I found the right screen. I found it! I found him! I found it! I'm sorry. Oh. Shut up! Shut up! No, I'm not getting rid of that. What if I need it? What if I need it? We're not arguing about this. Okay, if uh, maybe if YouTube ex die dies, then I have a backup. First of all, stop covering me. First of all, get out of my face. I'm trying. T I can't. I don't know. Sore is big. I. Okay. Help! Sora's crushing me. Help. Ah! Ah! Help. Ah! Ah! I can't find Sora. I, I just can't find Sora. I haven't been able to find you. Hold on. Oh, there you are. Okay, we're fine. Okay, we're good. Yes, yes, or get off me, says Saber. No. You can sit next to my son. 
Oh my god, I didn't turn you on. Okay, okay. Okay, I didn't- okay. Let's restart then, let's restart then. What have, what have we- We haven't talked about anything, so it literally doesn't matter. Okay, that's okay. We fixed it? Okay, we can hear Sora now? Yeah. Great, okay, thank goodness. Madre mia. Sora has no sound. Okay, yeah, we fixed it. No. Um, let me just get a little picture of what we're talking about first. Uh, Sora was insistent that we put... <sighs> Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection <laughs> gameplay on screen. I... Well, because it's what I'm doing right now. I've been... I was avidly against that. Um, but why? What do you mean, why? Because if, if you put that on the screen, you're just going to have... We're not even going to be talking about the movie. You're just going to have a bunch of people in chat being mean to you. Myself included. Which, by the way, I've never... I, I stand by that. When have I ever been mean to you about a game that you play? Besides League of Legends. Snooby, you don't like almost every single game I play. What are you talking about? I like... Okay, that's not true at all. Okay, what game can we play together? You're putting me see. in an unfair position here. <laughs> I can see you're, the gears turning. You're biased. You're biased I, I, and nitpicking. Oh my god. Baldur's Gate. We could we could play Baldur's Gate three. I'd be down for that. But that's a game I like that you also like. It's not a game that you like that I like. It's a game that I like because it's good. And by extension, you like it as well. Oh, by extension, I like it. Yes, by extension. It's not my fault I like good games. Okay, hold on. So today we're going to talk about a movie I saw recently. Promare. Oh my god, I just saw it on Thursday and it's almost like, what, five years old you said now, Sora? Yeah, it came out in 2019. I'm so... <sighs> I feel so much... Shame that I was had no clue about this movie until I, I saw it a few days ago. Like I I've heard the name a couple times. I didn't hear anyone talking about it though, and or if I was, you know, I just wasn't tuned into those places. But 2019. Um. Oh my God. Where was I? I think I think I missed it in 2019 largely because a I was very trapped in school and be that I was also trapped in freaking like a like a like an MMO phase so I didn't really see much of the outside world I just kind of got st <laughs> I kind of just got stuck between studying or not even study who am I kidding I'm study um I got stuck between doing the bare minimum for my class assignments and I got and grinding on on black desert online which was basically my life back then um, so yeah, I, it is a complete, absolute sin that I mess, that I missed out on this film. So I recommended that we watched it like a few days ago. I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll watch it. And then, and then they put it on, and it was fine. And then the first couple of minutes, you know, I was just looking at it, and I was also checking my phone a bit because then it was just fun little, fun little get together to you know sit down and watch a movie with friends. But then. After like a couple minutes, I was just like, I kept looking back. I'm like, hold on, hold on, this is Greece. And then from that point on, I was just completely locked, in. locked into it. <laughs> like at first, I was just like, oh, I was just like, kind of. I, it's not that I was half paying attention, but I was like also just like, like looking on websites and stuff as it's well, just like doing stuff at the same time. But then a couple minutes ago, it just grabbed my attention so hard and it just would not let go the entire trip. This freaking movie is a nonstop roller coaster. I, I don't say this lightly. I think it's, I think it's genuinely my favorite movie of all time. Okay. Like, listen, I recommended it for a reason. It is my favorite movie. I've seen it way too many times. I own... I've seen it one time, and that's not fair. I want to watch it more times than you now. I've see, I have the collector's edition from Japan and the American one. There's a ton of stuff about this movie that is just perfect to me. 
biggest and thing for me right now is like I think this is perfect for your TikTok brain rot because it's just so much downtime. flashing. It is such there's a zero downtime. Yeah, it's it just keeps moving. going. Right? It's oh my god. It it is like I don't I don't want to describe it as a as a zoomer movie. But it is a zoomer friendly movie, so to speak. It is such a freaking ridiculous ride all the way through. Oh my god. I cannot recommend the film. I don't I don't know how in depth we should talk about it because actually I don't think we should You don't you don't even have okay, like you don't have to spoil anything about the movie to talk about the things about yeah, it. Yeah, we do fun. though. That's like the, the there's certain scenes that are just so Crazy! Oh, I can't, I want to talk about them so bad though. So. <sighs> you could Pardon just me? spoil Ow. it for people at that point. I yeah, so if I'm spoiling it for people, it's a good movie. They should okay if, if they haven't watched the movie, they should go watch it now. I don't, I don't even know what it's available night. on. Huh? I own it. I'll just pop the Blu-ray in my computer. How about just that? Pop the Blu-ray in the computer. <laughs> sure. This free. <laughs> Just stream. Well, not not here, but Sorry. I'll stream from there. Like, I just have my server. hair. I have my hair. In my mouth. For a second there. Which is becoming more and more of an issue. I keep eating my hair. Sora knows this. Every time I eat a yeah. meal with them, I just have hair in my mouth. Not that Mia. I I don't know if it's possible for you to eat a meal without accidentally eating your hair at this point. Are you are you calling me a messy eater? No, I'm saying you keep eating your hair. It's a very specific issue to have. Are you calling me a messy eater? Is yes. that what you're doing here? I'm first of all I'm not a messy eater. I'm a speed eater. I'm not a speed eater either. A challenge eater. I'm not a challenge eater. You're a challenged eater. I'm not challenged. You're a challenged eater. You eat so slow. I, I do not eat slow. I eat at a normal pace. It's not my fault you speed run every meal. No fans of Cloud for Final Fantasy VII. I mean, Final Fantasy VII, from what I've seen, is also a slower-paced game. Obviously, I'm talking about people with, um, more, how do you say, severe attention span issues. What's your biggest red flag? There's many red flags. I don't think that's even a... Is it? Is it? <laughs> you can't really nail, um, narrow that down to one thing. Oh my god. Like Actually, it's... No, I, I heard something yesterday that might be one of, a top red flag for me. Uh, it's something I've never thought of, but upon hearing people discuss it at the party I was catering I so. for yesterday, it's a new red flag for me that I hope I never see. Uh, apparently at the party, a handful of people were like, arguing with each other adamantly that it's not weird to scoop peanut butter with your butter knife, you know, to make a PB and J, and then without cleaning the butter knife, go straight into the jelly. <sighs> okay, there is there is there is only one instant there is a singular instance in which I think that's okay. You eat them every day and you always eat a PB and J. It's still like a lazy yes, thing, but it's still like the in idea of putting this butter knife that's slattered in peanut butter and just sticking it. Right oh no, no, in ninety nine percent of in ninety nine percent of cases, I would I would absolutely agree with you. Um, I'm just saying in those very specific instances where someone's life is sad enough where they have to eat a PB and J every single freaking day of their life already, like come on, just let them do it, man. They're already eating a PB and J. Life doesn't get sad. Well, life does get a little sadder than that. But that's wait, wait, that's pretty I, close I to like the. PB and J's, I know, but do you eat them every single day? They, um, I don't feel. I don't think I can. I don't want to answer that anymore. Because it would be really sad if people ate PB and J's every single day. Like it's just I, gross. But I, I do. Mm. Moving on. I don't. Moving on. Back to the movie. It is such a colorful, action-filled mess. Not mess. Mess I mean, makes it sound like a bad thing. It's it's chaotic. It's ca it's very chaotic. It, but yeah, we we we're not exaggerating when it says it's, it's when we say it's it's just a non-stop ride. It does not slow down. And I I I left what I left 
wanting so much more because the movie it, it, it's a movie like it, it can it's only like it, it's a feature length film which means that all things considered it's it's not that long actually here's the thing the movie is like an hour and 35 hour and 40 minutes long it does not feel that long it feels a lot because it just keeps because it keeps going. going it doesn't really slow down for anything to the point i almost wish it did just so i can have a bit more but i think it would have not it would have tainted the it experience. would have it would have yeah it would have and okay. i i get that it wouldn't have worked in like a like an anime series format because anime it just everything is just so better for things that were like you want a slow ride you want like gentle build up yeah, there is no slow burn with this movie. It's just on fire all the way through. And by the end of it, I was just left with such a wild whiplash from all these things happening all at the same time. Well, not, not at the same time, but just um consecutively. Next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. So many things happening. And by the time the film's credits were over, I was just sitting, leaned back in my chair like this. I was like, oh my god. Oh, who's their favorite oh character? Uh, that's that's take a very wild obvious. guess. Take a wild guess. Let's take a look. Let's take. Let's talk about the main characters for a second. Uh, the first thing I see is shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> let's talk about the main characters for a second. Yeah, there you go. Grab the character. Here, if please. okay, if if us rambling is not enough to sell anyone, this will probably do it. What's his character sheet? Oh, he's so. Oh my god, he's so hot. You could have typed in, like. Oh my god, no, I, got, I immediately sheet. got distracted. He is so. He looks so <laughs> ridiculous. Right there. There it is. There it is. Okay. Mother <laughs> Mia. Oh my god! Oh, he's not even wearing—he's shirtless in this one too. He's always shirtless. Is there ever? Yeah, I know. I realize he's off. He, he's he, more. He wears has, a, does he, he ever? Wears a jacket in like two scenes, but it's part of the his. Uniform. Yeah, I, I remember he was shirtless for like the majority of the film, but I don't. I actually don't recall because I actually don't recall if he was he actually had, wore like a short. He wore shirt at one point. at the very beginning. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Off. Okay. It gets torn off. Of course, it gets torn off. Oh my god, oh, I can't even see us anymore. I thought that was like your favorite thing about him. It is my favorite thing about him. Well, it's one of my favorite things. There's a lot of favorite things I have about these characters. First of all, they're hot. Second of all, oh my god. But yeah, um, you need to watch the movie now, I guess. It's, that's, I hope, that should, that should be enough stuff to sell you. But let's, um, okay, we already talked about how the pace of the movie. Let's talk about, I have some other things that I wanted to bring up. Um, oh, right. Just, There's a certain scene. I don't know if I can talk about it. I don't know if I can talk about it. Fuck that scene. Oh, my God. The the climax of the movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the climax of the movie made me want to scream at levels that weren't humanly possible. I've never felt that way about any film that I've ever seen before. You know? What is this film about? It's how do how do you summarize it? Uh, fire people and firefighters. This is our firefighter person. This is our fire person. Person. That's that's basically the the premise of. Nothing makes sense. Don't get me wrong. Nothing makes sense. It's freaking. It's very unapologetically anime. In that sense, but it, it it works, right? It doesn't necessarily need need to make sense. Everything is just there to be stylish, to look cool, and and it works out. It it works out. I was I was a little I was at the very start. I was a l it took me a little bit to get into it because I was like, oh wow, that's that's really wild in anime. But then at a certain point, it just doesn't matter anymore, right? 
it's it's not trying to be anything else. It's just it's, it's just cool and stylish, and that's all there is to it. And that's all you need sometimes. Madre mia. I don't want to imagine the scream. I couldn't. I couldn't scream. I couldn't scream because I was I was screaming so hard that nothing came out of my throat. Madre mia. <laughs> I'm, bye, Juni. See you later. And... Uh, 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 sorry, your turn. Okay, it's just, this new is just gonna be over here going uh, the whole time. Okay, genuinely, anyone uh, who hasn't seen the movie, go see Promare. Uh, it is the first theatrical release from Trigger Studio. It has the music composer who did all the music for Attack on Titan, Kill a Kill, Blue Exorcist, uh, Solo Leveling, and a bunch of other super popular animes. They. The, both the music composer and the people that worked on it are like they oh my god they've been in they've been doing this for like what the better half of like 15 20 years now and this is supposed to be like a labor of love from all of them and it shows especially in like the art most anime movies and i this is very obvious at this point most anime movies from like the last 10 years look the goddamn same they all have the same style and general look, so even though the stories might be extremely different, they look visually similar. A lot of them, you can't tell what studio made it because they look so similar. This looks like nothing else. This is extremely specific in its stylization. It's, it, it clearly references other things Trigger has made, but stylistically, it looks like nothing else. And it, it just... Is, it just works it so well. It's like uh, when we talk about the pace and it, it, how chaotic it is, that also applies to the visual style. Everything is just a color explosion at all points, and it just worked. It nothing's. It, it is a nonstop like. It's a nonstop ride of. We said that like eight separate times. I know, but like it's it's a nonstop ride of style music. Uh, the story has like zero pauses, so even when it feels like the the story's about to like go on a slow ride and we're about to get like a crap ton of just people standing around giving exposition, it immediately cuts away to no action, 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 action. I have seen Gurren Lagann. Snooby has not seen Gurren. I've Lagan. seen a little bit of Gurren Lagann. Only yeah. a little bit. Promare is, but is heavily influenced by Gurren Lagann because about 70% of the people that made Promare were the crew that made Gurren Lagann. So go figure, they wanted to pay homage to what got them their start because most of the crew are from Gurren Lagann. When we say it was nonstop, it applies to basically every single department in, in the film. that Like visually, narratively, musically, it's everything is just flows together all at once and it's such a rapid pace and it is it works together so nice to create this amazingly exciting experience and i really want to talk about the scene can i please talk about the scene talk about the scene I, i'm pretty sure half the people here are probably not actually going to watch it at this point but does it do I, it's really hard to convince people to watch something that is fair to be fair i only watched it because you invited me to do so but oh my god but yeah, the climax of the film is just, oh my god, I don't, I can't properly explain why it made me feel the way I did. I think it's because that if, if you have just like a traditional kind of action film that's just kind of there to show action, not a whole lot else, you know, at the end of the day, when, like, the big moment happens, it just goes, like, oh, cool. That's kind of flashy. Like, there's no... Like... And I get... Sometimes that's all you need for people. Like, I get... A film like Pacific Rim has, like, a... Like, a... Pretty enthusiastic... Fan base of people who just want to see nothing but just big robots punching each... And aliens or whatever. 
and it works, right? But that's something like that has never hit me hard, so to speak. Like when when an action oriented movie does something ex some ex has some extreme climax that's really cool. At most, I just go, oh, that, that's kind of cool. Because there's nothing, there's really nothing else to that. The climax of this movie has so much working for it at the same time. You know, the tense point of the story, the characters that you are, you feel very much involved with. Everything building up to it gave it such a satisfying punch when it happened. And that was what made me want to scream so badly. And I please, can I just talk about it? Like I know, but I don't know if I should talk about it. Okay. Right. Before you do though, uh, for uh, Reich Reister, Reichstar, Reichstar, Reichstar. Yeah. I can't read. I get wanting downtime for films because there's a ton of movies I like where the downtime is needed. You need time to process everything that's happened. And like give the characters a moment to breathe but this movie genuinely does not need it there are moments in this movie that are slower paced than the rest of it it doesn't yeah but, but like the point we're trying to make is that there are no scenes in this movie that feel pointless or feel like they're dragging that on. that is fair. As, as soon as they get out the the information they're trying to get out as soon as you've gotten all the visual cues to learn something new they move on. There is no, like, how do I put this? They don't sit on a scene for too long is kind of the point we're trying to make. It's not like it's actually nonstop action. That was a bit of an exaggeration just because there, yeah, there are moments to breathe, you know, for both the characters and, you know, the audience watching to just... But, like, between the music and the stylization and all the, like, extremely good just character uh animation and voice acting it feels non-stop in that sense of you're getting like it starts off on a high note that's that's what i should probably preface this movie starts off on a super high note because it starts off with one of the highest energy scenes in the entire movie and it maintains this level of quality and like oh the entire time yeah, oh, oh is a good way to put it. It was freaking wild. There, there's a lot of stuff that the first time you're watching, you're going to be like, oh, 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 oh! But moving moving aside from the, the pace of the movie for just a moment, can I just say... Can I just say male damsels are a thing that I didn't know I needed until watching this movie? <laughs> can I just say that? Can you really call him a damsel, though? It's in in the he, he gets like okay, like kind kind of yeah, cause he he does get captured and rescued a lot. Well, the first time That's he gets captured, he doesn't get rescued; he just leaves. <laughs> that that is fair, but still, I think he gets captured like five separate times in in the film which is a lot if you think about it um i, I mean I, I to me that can i think that kind of makes him a bit of a, a bit of a damsel and obviously i i don't think you need us to point out between which of these two is going to be the damsel in question um it's it it is just something that i did not know i needed in my life until watching this film Oh my god. <laughs> oh. I I need to I need to move on from this train of thought before it gets really degenerate. <laughs> I'm 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 edging on very dangerous terrain right now, so I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move on a bit. Okay, oh, okay. Oh boy. But I want I want to talk about some specific scenes now. Like when you're the opening was like that you're mentioning was such a such a strong 
I don't want to say it was just a strong opening, yes, but there's a more descriptive way to put it. Like, it, it was it was a very high point for the movie, for sure. Um, I, I do... I do wish we we got we get to see I, I don't think it was necessarily possible with this I, I what I want to say is I, I do want I did want to see some of the characters act with a bit more independence and less reliance on other things but I, I don't think you can necessarily fit that into the film because again it's just such a limited runtime to fit so many things in like obviously it's it's a in, in a singular movie, you're not going to have a lot of screen time with side characters. Like, they're just kind of there, and they're, they're they're nice. It's a nice supporting cast. And you obviously don't really get to know any of them in, like, a really... Any sort of deeper capacity. But you know about them enough to know, you're, hey, they're your buddies, or hey, they're no, they're no good. They're no good. I don't like them. They're no good. They're no good. But in regards specifically to the main characters i i do leo specific i do leo specifically i do wish we got to see act a a bit more independently because he does he, he does kind of fill this damsel role no okay okay i think the thing here is that your brain is auto focusing on that way too much he spends more than half the movie being the like being a primary antagonist and it's being not half the movie he stops being an antagonist half the, at like half a... the time he's in the movie he's not he's not actively fighting in that sense until like the very end of the movie that's not okay that doesn't make him an antagonist at that point he, he definitely stops being an antagonist like okay, like after is, after like okay, what's this point, point of trying to make he is on his own fighting and fighting very well up until the like near end of the movie then he is a team yeah but he gets the piss beat out of him every single time and that made me feel things i shouldn't have been feeling he did not get the piss beat out of him he got the piss beat out of him so many times the, and i'm like oh my the god mid, the oh my mid, god okay. oh my god little twinkies he's oh, the he mid the the mid he can't fight. protect himself oh he's so the cute. fight in the middle of the movie he does not get the piss beat out of him. In fact, he destroys everyone that tries to fight him except for Gallo. And Gallo doesn't even beat him. He just temporarily distracts him. He gets the piss beaten out of him. And I'm like, he oh my god. He gets, oh, he's he gets, so, oh, he he is only, so defenseless he, and pathetic. He only, oh, he, gets, so... he only actually gets beat twice. <laughs> oh, he is so defenseless and pathetic. That was all that was going through my head at the movie. And then Gallo comes in and swoops in and saves him. But... Uh. <laughs> this was my Barbie. This is this your was, Barbie. This is my Barbie. This is what's awoken you. Yeah. I don't, I don't need, I don't need any freaking speech. I don't need any speech about, oh, how hard it is to live life. Just give me a little pathetic little boy that needs to be rescued. This is my... <laughs> uh, you say uh, as we're talking about the boss of an I entire see. group who's like... Hold on. Yeah, right here. Shown to be this strong. Jesus. Oh, my mercy. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, but... They from air too, didn't they? The fact it was talked about enough to alter my worldview. But okay, let, let's dive a little bit more into specific scenes now. We we talked about the movie at length. I mean, I, I, like at an arm's reach a bit enough. So, if you haven't seen it, I plead you to do so. It is just, I I don't think it'll disappoint. I I highly doubt it will. Um, but let's talk about some specific scenes some more. So in the in the very first scene that we were talking about. The high action scene is is where our the main character Leo is facing against uh, off against Gallo. other main character Gallo, and so at this point Leo is the antagonist, and he's wearing this super super. Hold on, hold on. 
Yeah, you just go get a picture of it. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a picture. Yeah, just Leo Fatia armor. It's so fucking cool, dude. Like, look how cool this is. Look how cool that is. It's it's so freaking greasy and slick. And he's just like... And for, for this part of the movie, he's still the antagonist and he's still like, you know, at, at this point of the story, assuming you're watching from El Blanc, like, you know, you don't know who this character is. They're just the evil fire person that's setting a world ablaze. And then... Um, how he's revealed is Gao like knocks like a part of his helmet off, right? And that was another part that made me want to scream, because <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, Twink! Twink! It's a Twink!" Okay, okay. Let, okay, let me preface: we were watching this with multiple people in like complete silence, and the second Leo's face mask gets broken in half and part of their face is revealed, I just hear this giddy little. Yeah, it, was, like, it was awesome. Hold on. Oh, oh my God! It yeah, was yeah, this this specific. Frame. This is the exact shot. I can, I can <laughs> this this shot got freaking burned into my core memories. Look at him. He gets slapped in the face, and his helmet gets damaged, and is like, oh my God. That was awesome, yeah. Um, but regarding that specifically, I do wish um, they got to utilize that suit a bit more. I think it, it's not a big complaint at all. It's not even a complaint at all. It's just something I, I wish well, okay. they got utilized it a bit gets, more. It gets utilized twice, but I feel the at the very beginning... Once Leo's been taken out of his suit and shown in his, like, normal character design, I I feel like the whole point of not having him go back to it much is just supposed to be, like, this super obvious visual representation of him going from antagonist to neutral party and then eventually protagonist. That makes sense, yeah. But like only a very, a, a very on-the-nose, like... When he's in that armor, it's representative of him as an antagonist. And as the movie goes on, he gets further and further away from that. That is completely fair. I only, only say that, frankly, because I think it looks really it's cool. It's a cool design. No, it's, it's a so super, freaking cool. The, okay, Leo's theme. His theme song kicking in when he first shows up like that, and he, like, locks into place, is such a mm for me. Madre mia. Madre mia. But that, uh, 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 yeah. The, that was one of the two screen points in the movie for me. The other time was okay. I'm I'm just gonna say it. No, I I shouldn't say it. <laughs> just say it. Just say it. The climax of the movie is that they kiss, and it is such a fucking. Wild scene from so much buildup, and the payoff is so, so worth it. They, they kiss, and I'm like, oh my god! Okay. Let, Holy let me, shit! Let me add, let me add a, a tiny bit of extra context so that Snoopy's not like leading people to have like a uh, very like random assumptions. They kiss for a, like, good reason, as in, like, there is a reason beyond we're just kissing. There's a legitimate reason why the characters kiss and need to kiss. But it is very obvious at the same time that it is supposed to be heavily implied kiss-kiss because they sit on that shot for 28 seconds. That's like 1% of the whole movie. Yeah, like, they sit on the shot, and it's, it's like, also one of the only scenes in the movie where the music shuts up. It gets really quiet, and, like, it's just focused on the scene. Oh, my God. Oh. 
It was so good. It was so good. And it's so much, so, so much more meaningful and impactful than what you see fairly frequently in either media or movies or whatever where I don't, I don't how, how do you say this I don't think I'm trying to phrase this in a way that's appropriate I'll just say a, a, a lot of media does not handle queerness very well i would say and i think My... that's a given i think some pretty flagrant examples of this i think a lot of people were talking about like um like just just like what's an example like people would know about um like a lot of people talked about when like um who's that like uh the overwatch the Blizzard was like, oh yeah, Soldier seventy six is gay now. Oh, and Wait, he's and, gay. Yeah, <laughs> it did. The, yeah, I know of Tracer. Like, by the way, oh yeah, also Tracer's gay. And it's like, okay, cool. That's, I don't care. It, it doesn't but add anything. It they're doesn't. Just, it's, it's not. It's just a, like added the blue. Like, hey, they're gay now. And it's cool. Yeah. Which but is it doesn't it, change anything it about doesn't, their character. It's or add not. Anything. Yeah, it's not there to do anything. But they're just, except they're just to score brownie to points, right? It's just yeah, brownie points. Credit. It's just there. Yeah, exactly. Like when J J.K. Rowling made Dumbledore, Dumbledore gay, which I'm sure she regrets now. That freaking psychopath of a woman, but whatever. Um. <laughs> in in any case, like, and I I this is it's it's no exaggeration at all when I say that this movie is my freaking barbie because it just it j people get it people get it and i i think there's no other and way okay. i can put that as as a personal side note there are two there are two ways uh LGBT stuff is typically shown in media. These are like I feel the two most common ways and it's the most annoying ways to me Either a It is just tossed in there just so they can get brownie points and credit and be like, oh, hey Watch our movie. It, there's a gay character and then when you watch it It's just like a random background character and they're like, oh, yeah, that's Tom He's gay and like that's is that's it. They don't expand on anything or you have the opposite where they're like Hey, this character's gay, and they're like shaking in your face the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like, they, gay, they form gay, the film around, life. they form the film around those. So There's yeah, so gayness. either either it's just like a like a side, like it's just like a like a like a little check mark, or it just like is catered around the fact that oh my god, gayness, you know, lesbians, wow, it's awesome. Ooh, stereotypes. Whoa, but like this... all the, I, I think this also mostly comes from the fact that like this movie did come out of japan and japan is very if anything scared to have obvious gayness in their movies but this it was movie so flagrant a, yeah this this movie has a lot of like throughout the movie there's a lot of uh background stuff that's lgbt related that is just present at all times so like on a second watch you typically would notice these things and it's like oh that's cool for example pink triangles are supposed to be a like symbol for gay pride because it's one of those things that are like reclaimed from something that used to represent something awful and pink triangles are in the movie from like the very few the very first few frames pink triangles are used to represent it's just used everywhere as like a special yeah. effect it's it's used constantly because it's part of the effects of the fire, which is a primary feature in the movie. But they go out of their way to use certain things that aim that direction. The director of the movie openly referred to the movie as 
boy meets boy, which kind of on the nose there, but it's obviously not something that's said in the movie. It's more just you could tell what the director was kind of leaning towards based on him saying that. Because he was referring to that after talking about Gurren Lagan being a boy meets girl or a boy meets boy when you're talking about the antagonist protagonist and then Kill a Kill being a girl meets girl. Obviously, and yeah. if you've seen those two shows, you know that there are very obvious relationships in them. So Promare follows suit. But the later you get in the movie, the more obvious it gets. For example, there's a scene in the movie where a giant fire like cloud forms and it starts out as a giant heart <laughs> and it sits as a heart for like a few frames too so it's very obvious you can't miss it uh, but it's just done in such a tasteful it's, done it's in a such, tasteful such a it, it is really done really creatively as well like when we're talking about that the because there's a lot of things going on at once. Like when you mention the pink triangles, it's also it's because it's like in in that. I see. Uh, they are something. Well, you see, like okay. they don't just throw it there for no reason. It's not thrown there for no reason. It, yeah, it's, it's it's like it it is in, intertwined with the very way that that is animated. Like the fire is animated in a way where the triangles are going to happen no matter what. The fact that they just happen to also be representative of what I was talking about is a it's just like a really cool tie-in like they managed to put things in there without it being like out of place you know what I mean that too and the big fire heart cloud thing is like in the context of the film you know that it they're like um how, how would you phrase it like they're they're connecting their hearts as one or whatever right and yeah, that, that means like a lot of that can have a lot of obvious implications with that, right? So it's, I mean, it's stuff there's like a lot that. Of implication with Gallo's line right after the last time he saves Leo. That too, and not to mention like the kiss itself was not just there because oh like, oh I love you, Mwah. It, It's not that. It's Leo is literally on the brink of death and he's trying to bring him back and doing it everything just felt so right for lack of better wording and i'm sure sora can phrase that a lot better than i can okay there there is constant stuff in this movie that has very obvious double meaning and that's something i love because i would much rather have uh i would i would much rather have movies where they just use double meaning a lot instead of doing that stuff that i've seen way too often as a person who watches an atrocious amount of anime and not a lot of good animes i might preface a lot of the animes i watch are animes that everyone either tells me this is terrible don't watch it or b it's an anime no one's heard of and i want to watch it simply because there's no way it's this bad so I watch a lot of terrible anime. So I come across this all the time where instead of getting a point across where it's like, hey, you could say this line and it would make sense in context to the scene, but out of context, it has a double meaning, which is also true. Instead, the characters will just be like, hey, I like you. <laughs> I'm gay. Holy Fire. shit. Fire. Holy shit. <laughs> but then in this movie, you have double meaning constantly which is very nice because it's both on the nose and not on the nose at the same time i don't know how else to say that where it's like if you're paying attention you're gonna understand it immediately but for anyone who's just casually watching and like doing the thing i feel like everyone does where they just look at their phone or they're looking at like youtube every now and then you might not realize it because you haven't been like fully tuned in but I like the constant double meaning behind I a lot of what they I love that do. every thing in the film just... <sighs> how, how do you put it? it? Everything just makes sense in the context of what's going on. And it's not just there for no reason, you know? And that makes it, I think, so much more powerful than any sort of ham-fisted moment 
and there's a lot of those moments in this film. Not not ham-fisted moments, mind you. There's a lot of really touching moments that happen so naturally that have so much. so much implication behind it it's just so nice as, a, as an add-on to this okay like this is something i've noticed in a lot of uh, anime movies recently again as someone who is a degenerate and just watches media non-stop there are way too many anime movies where obviously the antagonist starts out as a bad person and a lot of the times the antagonist either gets better and becomes an ally or they stay bad the whole time until they're like you know defeated very rarely in recent time have i seen protagonist or actively shown to not only have a ton of bad traits but actively fix their traits by the end of the movie a lot of the time their traits are just excused where it's like hey this person used to be an absolute shit bag and it's then it's just excused because they did like one nice oh, but thing. we're but we're friends now yeah but we're friends now in Promare, Gallo is openly shown to be, like, he has good traits and he has, like, a good mindset. But in the beginning of the movie, he's immediately shown to have a, like, terrible bias. And he says some kind of, like, ter like bad things to uh, the antagonist out of both ignorance and his bias. And then after being... Like, getting even a tiny bit of info that what he believes might be based on just an entire lie. We go through an entire, like, 25-minute sequence of him trying to deal with that and getting proven wrong. Yeah, well, it's not sugarcoated. He was, he was effectively racist is what it was. He was yeah. effectively counted as racist. And as soon, and as, soon as, and as soon as everything... That is like the basis for why he is like that towards uh, the burnish. As soon as he gets like the realization of, oh, my bias is based on just in like an inhumane lie. He he makes an adjustment, and it's not like an immediate adjustment either. It it's it's him like very uncomfortably being like no. This is wrong. I gotta fix it. And that's this. that plays into what I, what I was saying about how everything just seems to work so naturally. Nothing feels out of place. It's like you like you said, like character flaws or something. I think that are mishandled very frequently, and I don't think that was the case here. It's I think it's quite difficult to handle character flaws in a. In, like yeah, like it, it's such a prevalent thing where character flaws are just kind of mishandled or excused, and it, it's happened so frequently. I think people just kind of excuse them automatically, and it make you can do that for the sake of like a like a film or anime or whatever you're watching, but the just the fact that it was handled here with such care is very. It is it is another point on a on a on a huge list of things that I can commend this film for. It is f phenomenal how much is packed into each moment, and that doesn't like we've been saying this from the the very beginning. Every every it's just nonstop because it's chaotic, it's dense. There's so much behind everything, and it. And all that, all that happening consecutively, scene after scene after scene, it works together in a way where you don't feel lost or you don't feel necessarily like, you know, I, I would I would think that most people wouldn't necessarily feel overwhelmed at everything that's happening. It gives you a lot to chew on for sure. But it just does everything in a way that flows together so well. Movie so gay. So true. Yeah, I'll be continuing it with the the date with death visual novel on friday it's pretty gay is what i'm trying to say gay okay, movie so real quick and i a side note uh for anyone who has not seen this movie there are two prequel uh ovas that tag along with this movie and they're really cool to see 
after the film. These are things I would not recommend you watch first. If you are ever going to watch Promare and you happen to have access to these OVAs, I know they're prequels, but you need to watch them after because the main issue with watching them first is it doesn't really introduce you to any of the concepts in the movie, but it, like, shows them still. Like, they, it shows you a lot of the stuff you're about to see in the movie, but I feel like seeing these characters and stuff before you watch the movie ruins the initial introduction of them in the movie because the movie gives every character a, like, phenomenal, over-the-top intro. Like, everyone gets, like, a big, like title sequence to show them <laughs> off and if yeah. you don't I, I feel like if you get to meet these characters before you see that it won't have the same impact of like boom this is who that is this is their description and it, it is nice as like a little dlc to give like a bit of extra character that development yeah. that didn't fit it into helps the give their characters just a little bit of like how did they get to the point they're in? And they managed to wrap hey, it son. up in like two eight-minute OVAs. Little DLCs. Little Promare DLCs. Which is like great. In the, like in the beginning of the movie, this is one of the questions that's never answered within the movie. It's just something that's kind of like... To be fair, it's not an important question. It's just something that's like tossed out there. It is... It is... Gen, it's generally suspected that the leader of the Burnish who is the main antagonist at the beginning of the movie, has, act, has been the same leader for, like, 30 years. That's, based on dialogue, that's what they're insinuating. So, as you imagine, that scene that Snooby showed earlier where their mask breaks off, <laughs> the main gallo, his, his immediate thing is not, oh, the Burnish leader, or, oh, it's you. His immediate thought is, wait, you're just a kid. Easy, wait, you're just a twink. Yeah, oh my he's God. like, you're just a femboy. What is this? Holy shit. Um, but, like, that's his immediate reaction, and it's never really explained exactly why another character would have said that the Burnish leader has been doing this for 30 years, and then it turns out the person we're fighting is in, like, their early 20s at most. Uh... But in the OVA, it's it's explained. And, it, and it's not explained in, like, some weird way of being like, oh, they're actually 50 years old. No, it's explained in a very simple way of, like, it's just a misunderstanding of the characters in the movie not knowing who is who. Makes sense, yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, I'm just... The film left me in just such high spirits and I can't really appreciate it enough to to yeah, see there's, there's representation done right okay say real quick saber I'm not I'm not trying to hint at piracy depending on which version of the movie okay you okay buy, whatever you don't have the OVAs some of them have it. Sora has Blu-rays for it. No, Sora has a lot of actual Blu-rays. Every, I have every physical release of this movie. If there's a movie to get the physical version of it, it's this one, let me tell you. It just felt so nice to represent these characters characters in a way that is that you have these characters developing a relationship in such an organic way that's still such a fun and amazing and touching and exciting adventure all the way through it just fits together it runs like clockwork and to see that type of representation without being some sort of ham-fisted moment or just we this weird catering moment is such a nice breath of fresh air that I don't think, to my knowledge, has been achieved anywhere else. Obviously, like, I'm sure there's plenty of other films out there in the world that have been made where, you know, there's really, like, 
natural kind of relationships being made. In a, in a more organic fashion, of course. But this was that movie for me where I, I really got to see that realized for the first time. Like, these are just two people that have had such a wild adventure together and then they've developed a relationship as a result if that makes sense no it, it does and i feel like it's it's perfect in what it in what it's trying to do not the name more of the story is kind of gay okay gay movie 10 out of 10 i'm gonna eat lunch <laughs> Oh, more visual novels on Friday. I love you guys. I love you so much. And they're married. They're married now. That's canon, right? Trigger posted a ton of promotional material showing both the characters in suits like wedding suits holding like bouquets of flowers and stuff and while they never outright say oh yeah the characters are married it is so heavily implied and they never denied it either when okay yeah i'm not them. okay i'm definitely not the most articulate person to express appreciation for kind of for these kinds of things but i <sighs> seeing It's just such a moment of... How do you put it? I, I want to... I really want to say resilience. I think that's a good word for it. I think that's a good word for it. Yeah. It's, it, it, it means so much that it comes from a country and culture that is so traditionally... Opposed to Opposed it. to these things, right? And it makes total sense for them to not just outright say it because I think that honestly it, it adds a lot to the message that nothing is explicitly said because nothing needs to be explicitly said. Yeah, it, nothing, it's, not like, it's not like they're trying to make a piece if, on oh, if, LGBT if, rights yeah, or something. If there was Their ever, characters just happen to be gay. If there were, yeah, if, if there was ever a point in the movie, it was like, oh yeah, by the way, I love you, I'm gay, whatever, blush kissy, mwah, mwah, mwah. I think that would have degraded the film yeah, substantially because it means so much more the way it happened and where it's coming from. Yeah, because it's not the focus of the film, and that's that's a high note for me. Exactly. Th it's this, not... is something I've, this is something I've complained about to other people in private nonstop. I hate it when lgbt stuff is just hammered in uh media and that seems to be like the most common way of doing it is it's just hammered over and over and over again you cannot forget these characters are gay i would much rather have it be that gay characters are just shown the same way straight characters are where there's no attention paid to it a character just has a girlfriend yeah that's normal no one even like comments on it other than like oh hey how's your girlfriend doing it would be so much better if shows and movies just had scenes where the characters are talking and it's very obvious a character, I don't know, has a husband or something and they're also a guy. But you don't have to be like, by the way, you got married to your husband. How long have you two been together? But, and Man, you two sure are gay. I just, I just love it so much that we get to see these two main characters just form a relationship due to you know the facing off the circumstances and, and facing off their challenges against each other and eventually with each other and that is infinitely infinitely more meaningful than any sort of yeah you're gay moment because it shows in this action packed stylized way really how relationships like these you know occur in our in our own lives right 
you come across someone, you have a good time with them, you you know you play some you know if you're if you're meeting someone online, you play games with them, you you know you have you get to know them more and more. If you're meeting someone in person, you go out, um, you know maybe you're studying together, having a little coffee together, and th these relationships just form as a result of your relationship. It's not necessarily due to who you are. It's not like, yeah. Okay, like, here, here's, I guess, like, a, my final mention on, like, the note of that exact same topic. A very easy to notice thing, which I think is, like, beautifully done, is from the start of the movie to the end of the movie, Leo starts off being annoyed with Gallo, and then it goes from annoyance to just him being, like, uncomfortable or thinking he's an idiot which is different in the matter of like at the beginning of the movie he's annoyed with him in a very like aggressive way like he gallo is just an obstacle to him and he's very much frustrated with that later in the movie when he first has to do things with gallo he is willing to work with gallo but he still clearly thinks he's just an idiot and he doesn't fully like trust him by the end of the movie after leo's like final he's been saved for the final time, he is like 100% confidence in Gallo. Like, he doesn't doubt a single thing he says. In fact, he just fully agrees, and he's like, no, we're going to do it your way. He, he goes through a gentle transition of, this guy is an annoying obstacle, to, no, I need to do things the, the way this guy does it, because, like, this is it. This, I, I trust him. He, he means well. Helpless, defenseless twink. He's not helpless and defenseless. Helpless, defenseless twink. More of the story. I love helpless and pathetic twinks. All right. Well, you go get lunch, and I have to go do some things. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. We love you, chat. And we love chat, too. Bye, everyone. Love you, guys. Mamma mia. Ugh. Madre mia. Yeah.